This video is brought to you by Skillshare. More about them at the end of the video. So Christmas is approaching and you're wanting to buy your first telescope. Awesome news, very happy to have you here. Hopefully this video will be of use to you. Now you're probably wanting to know what is the best telescope that I can buy as cheaply as possible that will do absolutely everything I want it to do. And I'm gonna go ahead and set expectations from the start and say that there isn't a best telescope that will be able to do everything that will be at a reasonable price but i'll do my best to give you some tips and advice and what i think are the better options for visual telescopes as i go through this video now there's a well-known saying in astronomy that the best telescope is the one that you use most often and that doesn't necessarily have to be the most expensive it could be the most basic the cheapest option out there if that's the one that you use the most then that is the best telescope for you and that's where i'm going to focus this video on is providing advice on what i think is going to be the best telescope depending upon your situation so if there's no such thing as the best telescope why am i making a video called best visual telescopes for beginners well because in my opinion there's a lot of advice out there on the internet a lot of it conflicts with each other and I think I just want to break something down into some really simple things to look out for so that you can make the best decision on your circumstances. So I don't want you to go away and buy a telescope just because I've recommended it. I want you to receive some information that I think is useful to beginners looking at their first telescope and then use that information to make an informed decision on what the best telescope is for you. So my first bit of advice when looking for your first telescope is this. Figure out what you want to use the telescope for and then base your research around that. So if you're wanting to use it for just purely visual use in your back garden and you've got some space and some money, then you'll probably want to go and buy a big Dobsonian telescope uh, that you can store somewhere in your house or your garage and that will give you the best views of the sky possible. If, however, you're wanting to do some visual work and then move into some really serious deep sky astrophotography, then you won't be able to buy a Dobsonian telescope and then attach a really expensive astronomy camera and expect to have really amazing results because the two just aren't really compatible with each other. So astrophotography is a whole other game, completely particularly deep sky astrophotography. Any visual telescope, you can of course put your phone or attach a DSLR to it and take some really quick snaps of the moon or something like that and share those images. But if you're wanting to start tracking the sky and take really long exposures, then generally speaking, the best visual telescopes aren't going to be right for astrophotography. So figure out what it is that you want to do and then base your research around that the second bit of advice that i will give you is don't fall into the trap of going on amazon because they sell everything searching for a telescope and then the ones that will come up and some of them are from pretty reputable companies telescopes that will come up in the search result that will be aimed at kids or any toy shop that sells telescopes for kids they are absolutely useless i would not buy any of those telescopes and i would not recommend anybody buy any of those telescopes they are an absolute waste of money what you want to do is go to a well-known telescope retailer so somebody like first light optics in the uk rother valley optics as well as another one there's there's loads of others um, you know opt high point scientific in the us and all sorts there's loads of places to go and buy a telescope from the telescopes themselves might cost slightly more but you'll be getting a really good quality telescope from a reputable brand that is designed for visual astronomy do not fall into the trap of buying something really cheap on amazon and expecting great results because you will not get them now before i start talking about individual telescopes and my recommendations my last bit of advice is for visual astronomy you want to gather as much light into the telescope as possible, which means you want to really buy the biggest telescope that you can afford, but you want sturdiness. Sturdiness, this is true in astrophotography as well, stability is king, really. And if you're buying a telescope and then it's sat on a crappy, wobbly mount that can't handle the weight of the telescope, then you're just in for a rough ride. You're not going to get those 
epic views of the moon or planets or whatever it is that you're looking at. You want your telescope to be as stable as possible. So with that in mind, the first recommendation that I would make for a visual telescope is something like a tabletop Dobsonian. There are loads of examples of this out there and I'll talk through a few in a minute. But essentially a tabletop Dobsonian, I've got one myself, I've got the Skywatcher uh, Heritage 100P, is a small telescope that's got some reasonably quality optics in it and it doesn't have a dedicated mount or tripod that comes with it. So you'll need to sit it on a sturdy surface, something like a table, or a windowsill or something like that. And the reason that these are so good is they are very lightweight, which means they are super friendly for kids or people that struggle with mobility issues. They're a bit cheaper because they don't come with a tripod or a mount because you don't need one. And really there's very little setup required at all, to be honest, you pretty much just take it out of the box put it on the table, pop your eyepiece in and start looking for things in the sky. It's as simple as that. So the downside to a tabletop Dobsonian is that at the cheaper end of the spectrum, they are manual telescopes, so they won't automatically track the sky for you with a motorized mount. You will have to move them yourself. And the greater magnification eyepiece, the more quickly a target, of course, passes across the field of view. So if you're looking through a tabletop Dobsonian with something like a six millimeter eyepiece and looking at Jupiter, then Jupiter is going to move across the field of view pretty quickly. Whereas if you're using something like a 10 or 20 millimeter eyepiece, then it won't move across the field of view as quickly. But of course, you won't be able to see the planet in as much detail perhaps as you would be with something like a six millimeter. So you'll have to manually track the sky and that does get a bit trickier the more magnification that you have. The other downside is that because it's manually tracked, then it also doesn't have a go-to capability, which means you'll have to find the objects in the sky yourself. But I class that as a downside, but actually I kind of see it as an upside really, because one, I mean, everything that you're going to be looking at through these telescopes will be visible to the naked eye anyway. So I don't really see that as a huge issue because you'll be able to use the red dot finder to look at where it is in the sky and you'll find all of your targets no problem at all, particularly the moon, it's pretty obvious. And the second thing is, it means that you'll learn the night sky and you'll learn where objects are in the sky. And I think that's something that can be overlooked these days with all of the technology that we have and apps and all that sort of stuff, then actually just taking a bit of time to learn the night sky, I think is a really valuable skill to have. So let's talk about a few of the tabletop Dobsonians that are available to buy today. Skywatcher are a very well-known reputable brand and they have the Heritage 76p, 100p, 130p and 150p. Plenty of options there and the numbers essentially mean that the aperture of the telescope just gets bigger each time. So the 150 being the biggest which will mean that you'll get uh, better views of the night sky and the 76p um, being smaller. So of course the bigger that the aperture the more light that it can gather and therefore the better views you will get of the night sky. The Heritage 150p is currently available from First Light Optics for £239 which is a really good price for just starting out in this hobby. I know that might sound like a lot of money but astronomy is an expensive business to be in. Um, of course you've got the 100 and the 130p um, below that which are cheaper so if budget is tight then go for one of the other options like i said i've got the 100p and i can't recommend that enough i've had some really great views of the moon and of jupiter and some moons there and um, saturn as well and you can see the rings and the cassini division and wonderful i can't describe the feeling of seeing saturn through a telescope for the first time it's absolutely amazing if you're dead set on having a go-to capability where you can just control the telescope with an app, then there is the GTI version of the tabletop Dobsonians from Skywatcher. That obviously costs more money and I it's not that I don't recommend them, it's just that I'm trying to save people money and actually I think for your first telescope, learning the sky is a valuable skill to have, as I've said. But if you're dead set on 
just going straight to a GoTo um, telescope, then the GTI option is available for you. It will set you back 379 of your finest British pounds, which is obviously a lot more than the 150p, but actually still pretty cheap in telescope terms. There are also other brands out there that sell tabletop Dobsonians. There's um, Celestron and um, Bressa. Celestron actually have what they call a Celestron First Scope, which is a small tabletop Dobsonian, and it will only set you back £69. Now, I can't comment on the quality of it, but again, Celestron are a huge brand in telescopes, and therefore I have to assume that it will be pretty reasonable. Uh, I'm, for £69, if you've got a small child that's just wanting their first telescope and their first views of the moon or something like that. I don't think you can go wrong with something like that. And even at that price, it will be much better than any of the rubbish that you'll see in toy shops or Amazon. All of those tabletop Dobsonians that I have spoken about will come with some basic eyepieces and that will suffice for sure to start. You don't need to upgrade those when you're just starting out. Um, I will leave links to everything that I've mentioned in the description down below from various retailers so that you can go and check them out depending on where you are in the world. For those that don't have uh, back problems like me, probably from carrying all of my really heavy astrophotography gear out into the garden all the time, then you can go for a classic Dobsonian, which is essentially just a huge light bucket that will sit on the floor instead of on top of a table or windowsill, which again means that you've got no issues with sturdiness. Although if you're using it in um, the garden on your grass, then just make sure it's on something that's um, level and that it's not gonna topple over. Now you could ask anybody in this field the same question. I'd like to think that everybody would give you the same answer. For the money, you absolutely cannot beat a classic Dobsonian. They are a huge light bucket. The light gathering capability is phenomenal. The quality of them is great. You will not find a better telescope for visual astronomy than a classic Dobsonian, particularly at that price point. The downside to that is, of course, they're really big and really heavy. So if you've got a very forgiving partner that doesn't mind a huge telescope sitting in the corner of your living room or kitchen or wherever, then great. If you suffer with uh, mobility issues or if this is a telescope for your child, then I have to bear in mind that uh, it's probably going to be too heavy and too bulky for you to move. Um, we're talking upwards of probably 15 kilograms when it's assembled. Now the telescope does pretty easily come off all of the mounts so that you can carry them uh, separately, but even so, it's still pretty big and still pretty heavy. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now the thing with a tabletop Dobsonian is that because they're so small and so lightweight, they're pretty easy to just stick in the car or stick in a suitcase or whatever and take it away on holiday with you. And I've done that plenty of times when we've holidayed in the UK. With a classic Dobsonian, that is much harder to do because they are much bigger and will obviously take up a lot more space. So if you're somebody that's planning on traveling a lot with your telescope, then that's just something else to bear in mind as well. A big Dobsonian will make that much harder to do. Now again there are plenty of options out there for big Dobsonian telescopes. I'll start with Skywatcher again just because they're so popular that they generally have the most reviews so you kind of know what you're getting and if you look it up online you'll be able to get loads of reviews from people in the real world that have used them on forums like um, Cloudy Nights um, or the one that I would recommend more is Stargazer's Lounge which is run by First Light Optics. So Skywatcher to start with the 150p but they also have a 200p and a 250p now i think the 200p is probably the best option there because it's i think a nice blend of not costing too much money and not being so massive that it becomes a bit of a challenge to move but equally you're getting a really nice aperture. So in terms of views of the sky, the 200p will be absolutely fantastic. If however, budget is tight, the 150p will work equally as well for lots of people. So don't worry if your budget doesn't stretch beyond the 150p, it will still be an excellent telescope. The 150p is 299 pounds on First Light Optics. And of course the 200 and 250 cost more each time you go up a size. Again, there are other brands that also sell these telescopes as well. Um, I'll mention 
Bressa, although only briefly because when I was looking the other day, all of their telescopes are out of stock for Dobsonians. So it's not that I don't recommend them. It's just that if you want one for Christmas, then you probably want to look elsewhere. Ursa Major also have Dobsonian telescopes, a six inch and an eight inch. The six inch, it costs 259 pounds and the eight inch costs 349 pounds. And that is a wonderful price for both telescopes. And again, I'll leave links in the description down below for all of those telescopes so that you can go and check out which one is the best one for you. Now, another tip that I would give you when looking for your first telescope. Now, I've stuck with Dobsonians in this video, and I've done that for a reason. And that's because for the price, like I've already said, you're not going to get a better quality telescope than a Dobsonian. But if you're wanting a refractor or a reflector that will sit on top of a tripod, or on top of an equatorial mount, then that adds two things for me. One, it adds a bit of complexity, particularly with an equatorial mount. I wouldn't recommend for your first telescope getting an equatorial mount because that is just an extra complication that I think people don't need. And it does often put people off when they just can't get to grips with it. And it's not because of anything they're doing wrong. It's just because an equatorial mount at the cheaper end of the scale, I just think is a complete waste of time. And, and really for visual astronomy, it's just not needed. The other issue with cheaper mounts is that it creates a stability issue. So something like an EQ2 mount is just not really going to be that stable. A lot of starter scopes, so something like the Celestron 130 Astromaster, um, is a really popular telescope for people to buy when they're first starting out. It's a nice six inch telescope and the telescope itself is fine. It gives you great views of the sky. The, the mount is absolutely useless. Um, it's very unstable. It's not that easy to use for the tracking, even if you have the motorized version of it. And really, I just wouldn't recommend it to anybody at all. Now, if you're dead set on having a mount and a tripod, then I'd really recommend an Alt-As mount instead of an equatorial mount. It's less complicated and you'll find it much, much easier to use, in my opinion. The last thing I would want is for somebody to have watched this video and then gone out and bought their first telescope based on some tips that I've given you and then message me to say, I've just bought this telescope and it's a lot of rubbish. What are you talking about? And I just think if you're going to buy a mount, buy a proper mount. Uh, if you're going to use it for just visual use, then really a Dobsonian is the way to go. Now, if learning new skills is something that you're into, then I really recommend that you check out the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. I've been using Skillshare for Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success course. With over 15 million subscribers on YouTube, who better to learn from than MKBHD himself? I'm always looking for ways to deliver better content for you, and taking this course has really changed the way I approach my videos, all the way from the initial idea to the final edit. I hope you see the difference in the quality. I have had a few people commenting on this recently, actually, and it's really validating to hear. Now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. With a Skillshare membership, you can engage in your hobbies and passions all year long. It's the perfect way to start and finally keep your new year resolution. Why not make 2023 the year that you perfect a new hobby, land a new career or launch a new business. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description down below will get a free 30-day trial to Skillshare. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do remember to give it a thumbs up because that genuinely helps out the channel. Please also do subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with more of my YouTube videos. Happy hunting for your first telescope. I really hope that you find one that works well for you and I'll see you in the next video.